today's video is on something there's not much information about there about and it's something I tried researching before and it's about using a HLVP automotive grade or automotive type spray gun um, to spray latex paint on your projects in the garage. You're going to look at the Rockler store and see they have you know guns they'll sell for three to four hundred dollars um, that are airless. Well I'm a guy I have an air compressor in my garage for using air tools to work on my cars and whatnot and I wanted to get a gun so I got this one. This is about an eighty dollar model from uh, Husky, I bought it at Home Depot. There's nothing special about it. It's just your basic gun. You could go to Harbor Freight Tools if you wanted to, to get a good HLVP gun. It has just the basic elements on it, which are right here. This is this top knob is what they call your, uh, your pattern control. So basically, it's going to spray out like so. And when you turn this knob, it'll make it so it's either real concentrated in one spot when you screw it in all the way, and when you screw it out counterclockwise all the way, you're actually gonna see it starts to disperse it over a wider area. So you could adjust your pattern. Next up, you have this knob right here. Again, you could screw it in or out more. And what that does is it adjusts how much paint comes out because when you screw it in farther, it pushes more pressure on your trigger here, so you can't pull the trigger back as far, and uh, it reduces the amount of paint that's gonna come out each time. Another feature I added to this gun was I got this little regulator for the back. Now I know what you're thinking. A lot of air compressors have regulators built into them, and they do. But when you adjust, say, 80 pounds at the compressor regulator, that's before the air goes into the 50 or 100 feet of air line you have. And by the time it gets, by the time it gets to the other side, it's not going to be that pressure, right? So when you have this here, you're actually, you'll know what your pressure is. And the real cool thing about it is when I'm spraying, I could turn this knob to increase or decrease pressure as I spray. So there's a big benefit to having that. Another part to the gun is the tip. So you could you loosen this up and you could turn it one of two ways. You could turn it like this, in this, this direction, or you could go in this direction. The spray pattern is going to be perpendicular to this axis. So if I have it in this orientation, it's going to spray out real wide up and down. So if I want to spray back and forth, it works great. But if I want to spray up and down, if I have a pattern like this, that's not that's not going to work for me. But when I switch it like so, it's going to be going out horizontally now. So if I want to spray up and down, it works great. So that's the basic rundown of the gun I have. Another thing is you'll always want to make sure because when you're spraying your air pressure is going into here to feed up, feed it down. Or just make sure this caps on because if it's not, you're going to have some paint squirt out and that's not a good time. Another thing I purchased from Home Depot, it's about $2, is the small, just little container like this. It's great to keep extra paint in and if you want to do your measurements in here, you can. It'll allow you to be really precise and you could adjust how much water you use to cut your paint. With latex paint, it's water based. It's awesome. That's what you want to use. You don't want to use anything that is not latex based because latex based you clean up with water. Otherwise you're messing with spirits and turpentine and I've never messed with that in this type of gun. The nice thing about water cleanup is you can clean it up in your kitchen sink if you have to and it's not that hard. It's perfect for guys like you and me working in the shop. To mix our paint, you could use any type of latex paint for this you'd like. Uh, I've experimented with different types. We have a store out here in the Midwest called Menards. Um, it's a home improvement store. This is their brand called Conoco 200. Um, there's a company out here that they redo uh, old furniture, and this is what they use on theirs. So that's what I'm using on mine today. So we're going to mix it. The most important thing I found is, you know, you got to thin it with water for that reason. You want to make sure you're using a latex paint because latex is water-based then to spray it and it also makes it a lot easier to clean up because you could use water to clean up your spray gun so we're gonna add a little water to thin it um, I've went as high up to 20% water um, and you just mix it up to load it into the gun, I just put it in a measuring cup from the kitchen. The nice thing is, is it's got the little uh, tip here, so you won't make a mess. If you can see, it's a pretty watery consistency. You want that because the air is going to go through and pick this up in the gun. And if it's too thick, it won't pick it up all the way. We 
you always want to make sure you put the cap on because if you don't, the paint's going to squirt up and out and make a mess. Okay, so if you take a look at your gun, you have a couple of adjustments. This is how far your trigger goes back and you can fine tune how much paint comes out. And this top one right here, this is how you grossly tune how much paint comes out. So what we want to do is we want to check our pattern real quick. You could, I'm doing it up against the tarp, you could do it up against a piece of cardboard or anything like that. So all you do is just put your trigger and you can see I got my coverage. I can make it more or less. So I'm going to make a little more. You can see I made more like that. So with my gun adjusted, I'm now going to go to the project. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to spray the project. I found that you always want to have a spot that no one's going to see, like here, where you could grab an at to maneuver it around. So now we just spray. Now when you go, you start above the project, you spray, you go down, and then you finish, like this. And the reason why is if you decided to come back up and you, you went down and you decided to come back up, you would put a double code in the spot if you didn't pass it. So from here, we're just going to finish spraying the project. With our spray job complete, the next thing that we have to do is come in the garage and clean the gun. Now you could leave your gun there with paint in it for up to four hours and you won't have to worry about it drying in there. But beyond that, you want to make sure you get your gun and you, you clean it out really good. The reason why is because there's little passageways that go through here that you're going to see in a minute. And if paint gets in there and, dry and dries, you're going to have a real hard time getting it out uh, if you can at all. So it's very important you take care of this as soon as you're done doing your job. So if you come over here to the sink, I'll show you what we got to do. To start, you want to turn your water on, have it running pretty good. You want warm, if not hot water. When I do this, I usually put gloves on. But seeing this is a clean gun, I don't have to worry about doing that right now. When you buy a spraying gun, they come with a cleaning kit, and they're usually in which consists of a set of uh, small brushes. This is one of the brushes that came with my kit. It's a real stiff bristle and I found it to be the best at getting uh, all the stuck on paint off the inside of this gun. This is the only brush I really use when I do the gun. The only other thing I'll use is your normal kitchen sponge just to rub everything out and uh, make sure I get all the uh, you know dried latex paint off which isn't hard to do off this uh, metal. So to start, I have my water running, take the top off, any old paint that's in here, pour it down the drain, unscrew your top, put everything in there. Usually I get my sponge, clean it out like so, clean the outside, get all the paint off of it, and put it off to the side to dry it. Next thing what you do, unscrew this knob in the back of your trigger. This comes off, there's a little spring, and then there's going to be a pin that is in here okay if you take a look at it when you pull the trigger right when you pull it back it's basically um going back so paint could flow through here and you could see when you adjust this knob out you could see why you get more paint flow because it comes back with it so you're gonna get that you're gonna wash that off clean it dry it put it aside last but not least you got the tip of the gun all you do is you unscrew the collar for it and you can see, there's the actual part of the gun. That's where the air comes through, and this is where the paint comes through and grabs it. Rinse that out, clean it out, make sure there's no dried paint on there. You want to get your brush, scrub it as good as you can. I usually set it down in the sink at that point. From here, you got your tip of the gun. You usually have a bunch of uh, dried up paint on here. Sometimes you'll have some on the inside. And if you look, there's little fine holes right there. Those are those holes that... If you get something stuck in there and the paint gets dried, you might not be able to get them clean and it'll affect the quality of the gun next time you use it. So you wanna make sure you clean this off really, really good. Once this is clean, put it aside. Now with the collar, there's a little washer that's in here. You always wanna make sure you keep that in there because if it falls out, uh, and you could take it out if you want, it would just be really hard to, uh, to find or easy to forget about. So you wanna be careful about that. Scrub the outside of your collar real good. Put it aside in the drying rack. Last but not least, get your gun. Water on the outside, scrub it down, 
really good, okay? Then all you gotta do, rinse it off a little bit, you're good to go. Now we're just gonna reassemble the gun, which is the reverse of the disassembly. There's our pin, our spring, and our knob. Like so. Put our top on. Like so. Flip it over. Put our front piece on. Fill it with some water. Hot water is the best. From here, all you gotta do, is just go outside. Uh, aim at some place uh, in your yard where you don't have to worry about overspray getting on anything because there's still going to be some paint in the little surfaces of this gun. Hook it up to air and then I just do a clamp on the handle and let it just blast air out uh, until you go through all the water in the tank. That's a fail safe just to make sure you get all the extra paint out of your gun and it's really clean because again if it dries you're going to run into some issues. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. One thing I didn't mention in any uh of the previous parts is you want to make sure you have a suit on when you're spraying. You want to make sure you have a good respirator, cover your head up, and obviously you want to wear some latex gloves. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure you're safe so you don't get any of this paint on your skin. Now I know it's latex paint and it's water-based, but you still don't want all those chemicals on you. It's just, you know, take care of yourself. Either way, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Feel free to like or subscribe and I'll see you soon.